afraid to testify. They always blame it on Suge with everybody else do. You know what I'm saying? He did it. He always try to avoid everything, keep everything down. This is business. This ain't no game, none of this. But here in the Compton neighborhood where Suge grew up, Mob Pyru gang members like 32-year-old Heron see Knight as a man who gave his friends and family jobs. I work. I pay taxes too. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And, you and this is what Suge taught me. Yeah. I ain't never had a job before in my life until I started working That's for Suge. You know, in and out of jail. You know what I'm saying? Did a little bit of everything. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm a born again worker. <laughs> in this, he's a big guy with a big reputation. A local congresswoman once described him as one of the new young black entrepreneurs. Others describe him as a thug. In any event, the death row lifestyle that earned him a big reputation. Also put him in jail where he's awaiting sentencing for a probation violation. Lots of the cover, take a closer look. It's Suge Knight. Here in Las Vegas last fall, 330 pound Suge Knight scurries through the MGM casino. And in what a judge would later describe as a rat pack attack, Suge joins in kicking a down Crip gang member who apparently disrespected Knight's death row records entourage. This assault would land Knight in court a few months later where a judge determined Suge's involvement was a violation of his probation. I think he had been involved in an assault. Nearly two years ago, Suge had pleaded no contest to two other assault charges. In this Hollywood recording studio, he pistol whipped, fired a shot at, and threatened to kill two brothers after they used his telephone. George and Linwood Stanley later sued Knight. He agreed on a one million dollar settlement, but only paid a third of it. You see, we live by the gun, so we die by the gun. The Stanley's attorney calls Death Row a modern day crime family, adding he and his clients are afraid to publicly discuss their case. <laughs> There is no doubt Knight's death row records has profited handsomely cultivating the gangster image. I'd like to introduce to you Suge Knight, CEO of uh, Death Row Records, and he has a special announcement to make. But in public, Knight works another image. In suit and tie, he poses with the mayor at a South Central Youth Center where he donated money. He has handed out thousands of holiday turkeys and toys in the inner city the past four years. It's free now, come on. And hosted an annual Mother's Day bash for a thousand hey. single moms. The wrong that he's done supersedes any good that he's done. But Doris and but Saul Jamerson aren't buying what Shug is selling. He's a bully, and I don't have no respect for him. Witnesses say their son Kelly was beaten to death by up to a dozen death row thugs. <laughs> Nearly two years ago, Kelly had joined friends at this death row party following the Soul Train Music Awards. It was held here at the El Rey Theater on Wilshire Boulevard. According to police, witnesses say Kelly, a 28-year-old construction worker, little league coach, and father of three children, was knocked to the floor, kicked and beaten with metal chairs, glass from broken beer bottles embedded in his scalp, his face mangled all because of a perceived slight against someone from death row. The Jamersons blame Suge Knight. I was told that he was aware that some, my son was there, was having an article with some argument with someone, and, and he said, take care of it. And that's what they did. No one has ever been arrested for his murder. The DA's office cites conflicting stories and witnesses crime. afraid to testify. They always blame it on Suge with everybody else do. You know what I'm saying? He did it. He always try to avoid everything, keep everything down. This is business. This ain't no game, none of this. But here in the Compton neighborhood where Suge grew up, Mob Pyru you know gang members like 32-year-old Heron see Knight as a man who gave his friends and family jobs. I work. I pay taxes too. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And, you and this is what Suge taught me. Yeah. I ain't never had a job before in my life until I started working That's for Suge. You know, in and out of jail. You know what I'm saying? Did a little bit of everything. You know what I'm saying? But now I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm a born again worker. <laughs> in this short film, they say sex sales. I think murder sales. Was starring Snoop Doggy Dog. 
a young rapper songwriter called Sam Sneed was also working for Death Row. Crazy bitch, I'm Sam Sneed, better recognize. But in this so-called protection death declaration letter sent to the L.A. U.S. attorney last April, Sneed's father claims when his son tried to break a death row contract, Knight had him beaten and threatened to kill him. Sneed has gone into hiding according to the letter, and even his lawyers refuse to talk about it. Check this out, dog. Hey, look. Fox News has confirmed Suge and Death Row records hey. are being investigated by federal and local law enforcement for alleged criminal activities. Knight, in a recent newspaper article, charged the probes must be racially motivated saying sometimes people get sacrificed when they stand up. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, sometimes they take away your life. It makes you want to vomit, doesn't it? Attorney Joseph I mean, Porter can... represents several clients suing Knight in death row, including the Jamersons. It seems that it just follows him. I'm a gangster. When you see me come and step out the way. I'm supposed to let my child see that. That's okay. That's what you're supposed to do to make money in America. Don't buy it. And to equate that with Martin Luther King or Malcolm X is outrageous. And here at Linwood High in the early 80s, some say to describe Knight as a gangster would have been outrageous. He is remembered as Marion, not Suge, a motivated, hard-working football player. And later here at El Camino College, he was not only a standout defensive tackle, but according to his coach, a straight, easy-going, likable kid. There wasn't anything negative I could say about Suge with his stay here. Not at all. But today, it seems Suge revels in his gangster image. He named his Las Vegas nightclub 662. The numbers spell out mob on a telephone keypad. The old family home is still trimmed in red colors of the mob Piru street gang. So, hey! One former employee says Suge gangsterized death row to the point wherever he went, someone went down in a fight. As a result, it now seems Suge won't be moving into this hilltop Encino mansion he is remodeling anytime soon. Knight's attorney and family have not responded to our request for comment. Meanwhile, at least a half dozen people have filed suit against Knight because of violent behavior including two NFL football players who say they're afraid to talk about it. As for death row, one former employee says that ship is going to sink on its own. And we'll have that story tomorrow.